Hello again, welcome to another episode of the Uranium Market Minute. Today is Wednesday, November 24th, and this is episode number 42. My name is Justin Hewn. I'm your host. I'm the founder and publisher of the Uranium Insider Pro newsletter, the only investing newsletter that focuses solely on uranium and publishes on a regular monthly basis. Before we get into it, nothing in this video is intended to be investing advice. I'm not your financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Please always do your own due diligence when it comes to investing and always take responsibility for your own choices. Let's jump right into to the daily scoreboard. Spot price of uranium today is flat, unchanged, 47.25 a pound after a nice dollar up move yesterday. Likely came with some purchasing in the spot market from the spot uranium trust. Although the pounds they purchased were minimal, um, most of the pounds that they got yesterday came from a um, conversion of UF6 to U308, which I will discuss a little bit further in the mailbag question. Um, they took in $200,000 yesterday in new capital total pounds acquired 983,000 pounds of U308 yesterday alone. Um, they closed yesterday at a discount to NAV, again, minus 2.55%. However, they did issue some shares yesterday. So there was a spike in the price of the trust in the early morning trading. They took advantage likely of that greater than 1% premium that happened for a minute during the day, but it didn't happen very long back down to a discount. I do not expect this situation of them trading a discount to NAV to last much longer do believe we are in a brief consolidation period after this brief sell-off, probably going to chop sideways for a minute before a resumption of, a, uh, of the next leg of, of this bull market. Sput's treasury remains strong, 46 million in cash, enough to purchase almost another million pounds of U308. Since the 17th of August, when the ATM went live, they've acquired 22.5 million total pounds of U308, have raised almost a billion dollars, 994.5 million. As mentioned yesterday, in yesterday's market minute, they now have the ability to raise up to 3.5 billion total, and their ATM is now uh, up to the 1.2. Excuse me, 2.2 billion is their total ATM. Turning to the sector equity ETFs, yesterday URA reported an increase of 400,000 shares. However, URNM reported a redemption of 125,000 shares because redemptions in URM were slightly greater than the inflows into URA on a dollar basis. Yesterday's ETF flows gave an incremental amount of mandated selling, $3.6 million, um, not much at all. We saw a pretty decent day yesterday in the uranium sector. Because of that rally yesterday, their AUMs combined increased 67.2 million and now sit at right about 2.3 billion combined AUM between the two ETFs. Let's take a look at the charts today. Starting out with URA, very, very small volume today. We are trading uh, towards a holiday weekend in the U.S. markets. Um, Thursday, Friday will be closed. And so it's a long weekend, holiday weekend. This is kind of the season where um, the volumes tend to, to dry up. Although we had a pretty, sub, uh, pretty incredible December last year. Will lightning strike twice? Not really sure about that. We're going to have to see. However, I do think we will see a strong December I don't think we're going to see much tax loss selling in this sector as most of these stocks are up substantially year to date and up substantially um, for those holding these stocks, even with this 15, 20% correction we've had over the last couple of weeks. Um, just looking at the, um, at the indicators here for URA in this brief period of consolidation from, let's say, uh, last week in September to about the second week of October, we had about a two, about a three week consolidation period. And you'll notice we had a pretty chunky sell-off, followed by um, a few days of chop. MACD bottomed right here, September 29th. We had another week and a half of chop. Very similar looking uh, in terms of MACD. Looks like we, we found a bottom here with this bottom candle. Very similar looking to this bottom candle on the 24th of September. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a little bit more sideways chop before the resumption of this bull market. Looking at the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust. Small volumes again, although we're up on the day, we're likely right around that, you know, maybe even with the with net asset value, possibly at a slight premium spot market stagnant and the trust up. Maybe we'll see a little bit more volume come in as the day progresses and a little bit of shares issued to raise some cash. This is a really nice looking chart. Um, looks like just a really, really giant bull pennant. And uh, you know, most of the time we have these consolidation periods or these, these bullish patterns uh, on the charts they tend to break out in the direction of the overall trend. So most likely we will see this chop a little bit more, see this flag, uh, excuse me, this pennant start to kind of uh, 
<laughs> get really tight here, and then it'll break out, in my opinion. That's likely to happen in the next couple of weeks. Let's take a look at Cameco as one of the larger caps in the space. Similar looking chart to URA, not a lot of volume, not a lot of action here happening today. I think most people are already kind of in their, in their uh, Thanksgiving vacation mode, not really paying much attention to the markets today. So the mailbag question today um, has to do with what happened yesterday with Sprott. And uh, essentially the question, this came from Ian. Yesterday I saw that Sprott sold 300,000 kilograms KGU of UF6. I thought they weren't sellers. So basically, I'll, I'm just going to briefly explain um, kind of the uranium fuel cycle for dummies here, um, just to, to wrap your head around exactly what happens um, to the uranium commodity as it runs through the fuel cycle, preparing for use in a nuclear reactor. And then I'll mention, um, I'll, I'll give my thoughts on what happened with the UF6 for Sprott. So the uranium is mined out of the ground. It's mined via underground mine, open pit mine, or an ISR mine. Um, the, the mined mineral then is uh, processed, usually with some type of milling, some type of leaching, often with acid. That separates the U308, or the, um, which is uh, uranium oxide. And um, the U308 is essentially what, uh, that's, that's basically the yellow cake. That's the, the pure, or not necessarily pure uranium, not the pure metal, but that is the product that is traded and that is the first step of the fuel cycle. Um, that's the product that Sprott has been acquiring is the yellow cake, the U308. It's literally uh, stored in you know, 55 gallon barrels, stored in a can. Um, and that is the first step of the fuel cycle. The second step of the fuel cycle is that that U308 is converted to a gas, to uranium hexafluoride, and it has to be converted into a gas in order for it to be enriched. The en enrichment process is basically this UF6, the uranium hexafluoride, is spun in very high-speed centrifuges in order to separate the two uh, primary isotopes that are contained in the UF6. That's the U235 and the U238 isotopes. The U235 isotope is the fissile isotope, and it, in natural uranium, which is another name for UF6, um, the U235 isotope is 0.7% of the total mass. And so uh, that needs to be enriched up to about 35 to 5% for use in nuclear, um, in nuclear fission. And so what happens essentially is the UF6 is spun up to that 35 to 5% in the enrichment phase. And then that enriched uranium, also known as EUP, gets fabricated into fabricated fuel that is specific for an individual reactor. Um, so that has a different percentage of enrichment level, different style of fuel rod. Um, I'm not a nuclear engineer, so I'm not gonna get into the details on that. But so um, during the purchasing process for Uranium Participation Corporation, which is the fund that Sprott took over this year, they purchased primarily U308. However, they did acquire 300,000 KGU kilograms of uranium of UF6. And uh, Sprott has only been buying U308, and it was suggested to them, um, purportedly from John Quakes, as many of you know him from Twitter, that, uh, that they ditch that UF6 and go to a pure play holding U308. So what they did is they sold that UF6 or essentially exchanged it for U308. And the 300,000 KGU essentially uh, is 783,858 pounds of U308. So they made that exchange yesterday and they purchased an additional almost 200,000 pounds with cash of U308. So that's kind of just a, a rough and dirty on, on the fuel cycle. It's obviously much more complex than that. Um, and again, I'm, I'm not a nuclear engineer, I'm not a chemist, but um, I do understand the fuel cycle well enough to understand these elements and what they mean and the time that they take. You know, that whole process from the mined mineral into the fabricated fuel rods takes anywhere from 12 to 24 months. 12 months is really on the fast side and that, that would be an ISR mine um, that's already established, by the way. So it takes 12 months from the well fields to be established before you get into serious production, even in a place like Kazakhstan. Um, so that's the mine mineral and it's converted and enriched in, you know, without traveling too far geographically for those two processes. Um, so that, you know, 12 months is really, really fast. Um, usually it's more like 18 to 24 months for, um, for a hard rock mine, open pit mine to uh, mine the mineral, mill it, process it, um, convert it to UF6, enrich it into EUP and fabricate it into fuel. So going forward, Sprott now, uh, now holds roughly 40 million pounds of U308, and they will only be purchasers of U308. 
So that's what happened yesterday in the market um, in terms of Sprott's purchasing and acquiring of U308. Now they are a pure play, U308 Trust. Um, all right, well, I hope that you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving if you're in the States. If you're not, um, I hope that you have a good four day weekend away from the markets and um, hope that everybody is well. And hopefully uh, whether or not you celebrate Thanksgiving, maybe focus on something that you're grateful for. That's something that we always do um, as a family is, is verbally state what we're grateful for. And I have a lot to be grateful for this year. And um, a lot of that has to do with the support that I've been receiving from everybody watching this and all of our members. So thank you sincerely from the bottom of my heart. And um, we will see you all next week. Like I mentioned yesterday, I won't be back. Um, the next market minute will be Wednesday the 1st. Um, our December monthly newsletter will be out December the 2nd. And so I will see you on Wednesday and uh, have a great weekend. Cheers.